Welcome back, guys. We're here again with our church to house conversion, turning this old abandoned church into our home and setting up our two acres as a homestead. I got a lot of things I need to get done today. We, uh, we've been really busy trying to get things done here to get it turned as a homestead. Winter wasn't as brutal as it normally is here in the high Allegheny Mountains, but nonetheless, it was cold and there's just things we could not get done. But I'm gonna go out here and uh, get in our new building and get some tools out that I need to do a few projects around here today. This is our one of the two buildings we just picked up. We picked these up from a local building distributor. They were repos and we got two of them for less than the price of one. I know. Got a 3,200 square foot church and need an outbuilding. There's certain things you just can't keep in your house. So we keep them out here in the building. But today I need to go plant a giant thuja. We are going to propagate this and turn it into lots and lots and lots of giant thujas. I need my cart. I need some dirt. A little bit of peat moss left over. An explosion of we still need to get this building organized like probably every building in America. You shovel on a spade. And go dig a hole. Plant a big tree. But eventually this whole courtyard area in here will be our private backyard. So we figure we'll put the first tree right there. Okay, that hole ought to be deep enough. I'm going to go get the tree. And there we go. One giant thuja. Doesn't look giant to you, huh? These are a cool little tree. They're in the cedar family. They'll grow three to four feet around in diameter at the base, and they get 14 to 15 feet tall. And they keep this cool pine tree shape all through their growth cycle. They don't have a lot of predators. They do well here in, uh, in the mountains where it gets cold. Um, just don't, a lot of diseases and bugs aren't after them. Our plan though is we'll take cuttings off of these limbs and start them with rooting compound and create a hundred of these off this one tree. I think I had to give like $60 to uh, Lowe's for this tree. But if it lives, I won't have to buy another one. The roots are pretty compacted on this. I don't want to chop them, but I want to uh, break up a little bit of this clay. So the roots got a chance to get free. Pretty well standing up like it should. Pack around it with some good peat, potting soil mix.
we're going to saturate this soil now. Now we just let it grow and we keep taking cuttings off and we'll end up with a hundred of these things to use as natural barriers around here. Not that we don't like our neighbors. Just sometimes you want some private areas. So let's take a walk around and look at the rest of the homestead now. Okay, this is one of the two buildings that we picked up on a repo sale. We picked up this one and another one and really got them for less than what we'd have paid for this building by itself. I've still got to underpin it, but it's a nice building. Um, nice siding on it. Got the side door. And then we built a ramp. Had to buy a lawnmower. That really puked me. But then we've got our kayak stored in here and a bunch of other junk. I'll get back and build shelves. They come out and around. We can put totes, keep garden stuff, outdoor stuff only in this building. Because, like I said, it's not stuff you want to keep in the house. Let me show you the other building. The other building we have out front is uh, more of a barn-shaped building. It was a little building. Somebody had cut very rude holes in the side of it to put chicken wire in it, make a chicken coop out of it. And uh, we were able to get a good deal because we'd have to clean up the chicken poop and, and try to fill those holes back in with real windows or something. Or we could keep our turkeys in it. They're getting so big. And then over here, these are our chickens. We got some mixed ones in here of different varieties. And then we've got the little Rhode Island Reds that are coming along real well. Rhode Island Red is my favorite chicken. They are hardy. They lay 325 eggs a piece a year. Um, they won't let you down if you're looking for eggs. I'm going to move this back over the middle because you think chickens can't fly. They will fly and they will get up into the loft. We'll move this forward and then we can use right inside the door. We can stick things up there for storage that relate to chickens, brooding, hatching eggs, sawdust. I don't know, this stuff. Let me show you some other stuff we got going on on the homestead. Later, I'll give you a tour of the inside and show you where we are, where we're caught up now, at some point. Maybe I'll put all the destruction and construction videos out, but it was a long winter trying to get things done in just the order we needed to get them done just so we could live well, or at least get by. Got a lot of projects to get done around here. One of the areas we're going to plant those thujas are along this property line. These are basically camps back here. People don't live in them full time. They just come up and spend time in the summer and sometimes in the winter. And we'll put those all along our property line because we go clear back to the trees at that cabin. And then over here, we go to that tree and somebody very special is buying that house and moving in. Um, we'll catch up on that next week when they do that. Some of the things we got going on, it never ends. Trying to get a house built and then trying to start a homestead is kind of stupid on my part, but that's what we do. This is our temporary gas tank for a temporary project in the house. Got to get the old four-wheeler running again. I ordered another CDI. Um, that seems to be a real weak point on these older Hondas as those CDIs would go out and Honda doesn't make them anymore. So now you're stuck with uh, whatever brand. And here's my favorite rooster. Yep, see him, he's cool. He's got his, but some of our plants are out here already we've got peppers and onions cabbage started lettuce freckles romaine which is absolutely my favorite and uh, tomatoes galore we still have to separate tomatoes we let them get a little far but we'll separate those and uh, we've got jalapeno peppers i think she's got habaneros in there she's got celery started it's uh it's strange to be here because the furnace had to be on this morning because it was cold. And uh, right now, I'll show you the thermometer here in a minute. Can't make his mind up. Some more stuff here. 
and there's our lilies. But we've got raspberry starts that we started. Some are doing well. Some are trying to make a comeback. The blueberry. Mm. I don't think I'll buy blueberries from Tractor Supply ever again. That was uh, about all. Of those died right off the bat. Um, we've got garden vegetables started. Um, we haven't started our cucumbers and squash yet because they grow so quickly. Um, yeah, here's the thermometer. Furnace on this morning in the 30s. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, in the shade. We're parked at 80 degrees. Now over here, all these little cages are surrounding our new fruit trees. This is also another iffy thing we're wondering about. Um, that peach tree over there is doing really good. This one, frost, I don't, may have killed it. May have killed several things. We've got plums, we've got wine sap apples, honey crisp apples, Granny Smith apples, Golden Delicious apples, which was the West Virginia apples invented in Clay County, West Virginia. And then we had three peaches. We we're planning on getting more plums. We just have to see how it does. Um, we had a very weird start, and all of the trees went ahead and leafed out and bloomed. And then it came a very cold spell, um, hot frosting or you know hot weather in the afternoon, and very extremely cold temperatures at night with heavy heavy frost, and the fruit trees didn't know what to do. So. We'll see, but you kind of figure your first year you're going to lose a few. Until you get them established, we won't see fruit off these trees for three to four years because in the first two to three years, if they bloom, you're going to pick that bloom off. You want the tree to put all of its work into building a root system and a strong tree, not producing fruit for the first two or three years. That's pretty much where we've been homesteading out here. Garden is going in back here in this area. How big yet, I don't know. It's, it's not going to be... Our garden in North Carolina was 100 by 100 and probably not going to be that big this year, but eventually I'd like to have that whole field in. And we're not going to get the no-till raised beds in this year. Um, can't get the materials that we need to get that many started. So we are going to, Jonathan is going to bring a tractor and till us a garden spot up this year. So we'll do it the traditional way. Hopefully add on to that and grow that into a no-till garden as we go. I've got to get this tree cut down. Got to get the only other tree on the property cut down. But let me show you all something. Tracing I did last night. You can't see it. But you see the house. These trees up front. See the fence way out there. And then you've got a, a state road there, a little two-lane road. And right across from that is a hole that's probably about that deep in a, in a nice big creek full of trout. It'll be bass later this year. We went over fishing last night. Well, I wouldn't say we went fishing. We went over and fed the fish and broke a lot of equipment, getting everything tested and ready. Forgot that we had like 10 and 15, 20 pound line on our poles from being in North Carolina, which was a little bit rough in these waters. But I've got fences to build, trees to cut down, gardens to get in, and uh, I gotta go get some water, so I'll probably take y'all with me and show you where we get this water. Right now, I can't water the plants off of the well because it's all going through a water softener system, and that adds just enough salt to the water that it'll stunt your plants or cause problems for them. It won't cause you health problems, but we've got a great place to go get water right now. This weekend coming up, I think Tracy and I are gonna get in and try to get the drains finished to the bathroom, and uh, we're also gonna try to get an outdoor water hose um, connected and we'll go past the well pump, past the pressure tank before the water softener tap in and run us a three quarter line so that we can get water out here because you're just not gonna carry buckets of water to a garden. You're gonna need a way to get that water out of that well and on that garden. So let me do a few things and then I'll be back with you just in a few and, and maybe we'll go get some water. It's a cool trip. All right, let's head to the watering hole and go get some of the finest water in West Virginia. Let's take this old messy truck with us. I have forgotten how hot it gets in a truck in the summer. I think I remember how to work the air conditioner even. Hopefully that doesn't wear out the camera too much.
And here we are. In good old fashioned West Virginia spring. This water is just clean. Just like that, we've got 20 gallons of fresh spring water that runs right out of the deep mountains of West Virginia. This, uh, this spring's been used by people in this area for hundreds of years. Let me put this in a truck. I just pulled back in here at the house after getting the water. I was gonna tell you more of the history of this spring, um, but there were some other people that pulled off and they wanted to get a lot of water. And a lot of private people in West Virginia, they don't really wanna be interfered with. I'm gonna go check on Tracy, see what's going on. I'm gonna give you a walkthrough tour of what we've gotten done on the inside of the church to house conversion and how we're living just shortly, so stick with it. You may remember the walkthrough that Tracy gave you of the church last year. She walked in, this looked exactly like it looks now. Not much has changed here, except the big stack of drywall. There's 20 sheets still there. We've already been through 35 before that, so that's a lot of math, 55 sheets of drywall. We'll get those done. Now this way is gonna be a lot different. In here, you can see we've put this wall to break off that area where we just had the uh, baptismal hanging out and a bunch of junk hanging out. Now we have different junk. Got to finish all the drywall. Got a doorway coming in. This is going to be our utility room. Our washers here, our dryers here. Um, got a drywall in here. We got a utility sink, hot water tank, water softener, whole house filter to filter the sediment out, and then a big tank right there is a pressure tank, which was the big part of the well process that I don't even know that we did on video, but we didn't have water for quite a while. And five, six thousand dollars later, from two acres away, we rewired everything, put in a new pressure tank and got all that. Right now, this is also the temporary kitchen. This is Tracy's stove. The gas tank I showed you earlier is wired into it. These counters will stay once the kitchen leaves, and there'll be wall cabinets put in because these are gonna be the folding table and storage for the utility room. And then the stove will go to the kitchen. I've got a hood coming Friday and some wall cabinets because it gets a little warm in here cooking in the temporary kitchen. But in here, home of the dogs. Not much has changed. This door that went into the bathroom that was here is now gone. and. We haven't built a walk-in closet. This was our temporary kitchen temporarily. And now we just have some pantry storage in here. This will still eventually be the walk-in closet for the bedroom when we get to that point. The table was rescued. It was going to the trash and we didn't have a table. We found this and we thought that's a great place for us to sit and eat until we get a dining room table. Not really our boom chicka wall wall kind of thing, but it's good. Temporarily, the refrigerator's hanging out here. And here will be one of the biggest changes that you've seen. You remember we were tearing walls out here and this was all one big bunch of paneling and jacked up wiring and, and bad framing. So part of why we didn't put out a lot of videos is because we needed the place to live through the winter. We had the water problem solved, but having a laundry tub is not a great bathtub. I mean, just try to picture me and Tracy sitting in that laundry tub trying to take a bath. It was barely room to put soap on. Then it got cold and we got an $850 electric bill running the commercial heat pumps on this building because they're not efficient. They were put in in 1981. They've got more leaks in them than the Titanic currently has. So we put the wood stove in, dropped our electric bill to a couple hundred dollars because that thing was capable of heating the whole house. That's black pipe up and then into the transfer box into triple wall pipe through the roof. Tracy had to cram herself in a little hole in the attic because <laughs> I wouldn't even fit where we had to cut that hole. And then we put the ceramic tile on the wall and we did the ceramic tile down here on the floor to give us a nice fireproof hearth. One of the biggest changes we made was putting this short wall in. Something we hadn't originally planned to do, but we decided that we were gonna be living in a tall skinny living room 
and that was going to be the master bedroom. You can still see the Smurf window in there. We haven't done that yet. So we put this short wall in that allows space over into the bedroom in a more open floor design. Tracy again got in the attic and installed the boxes and bracing for these ceiling fans, which was, this one sucked. It was about in line with that stove. The other one was farther down and she was literally crammed into a space and the board wasn't the right size and she had to stay there. It was, it was a mess. Um, but that's pretty much how our living room is going to be where you still see the insulation here and in the master bedroom. We've got windows back here that are already sitting there that just need to be cut and fit in those holes, but it's been cold or wane, wainy, wainy. It was really wainy, <laughs> rainy whenever we needed to do that. So we're still waiting to do that. The master bedroom has the same issue, but this is kind of our master bedroom. There's already a framed in doorway here that just needs cut out going into that walk-in closet once we quit using it for storage. That ceiling fan, I want to thank Tracy again because that thing is a Hunter six blade fan and it pounds the air down on you. Um, we don't have our furniture in yet, but um, Tracy's going to take that wall in the back of the church, that real pretty wooden wall that, that she showed you. She said something was going to happen with it in the first video. And that's all going on this wall behind the bed for headboard. Still have to put floors down in here. But mainly the problem with that is, is that we haven't decided what we want for a floor yet. Now, one of the biggest transformations, and you have to have it, is the bathroom. Tracy's clawfoot tub. We're working on the wainscot now to put that all the way around the lower part and trim it in. We have the shower in the corner behind the door. This is a private place that you use for the bathroom. Over here, you have the double vanities, which we still have to go into the house and do the drains because we have to go out into the torn up part to put a kitchen drain in because they all tie together. And we called that the refrigerator all winter because it was cold as it could be in there. But the bathroom is nice. Tracy can come in here and soak. It has a lot more room than a laundry tub. And we can take quick showers. A lot has changed in here. This will be a four foot wide, just open space, but it was so cold in here all winter. That we just kept the door and kept it shut. and. Well, it has changed. It went from having drywall and a wall down the middle to being a big open space. Our two offices will be back there. You can kind of see the doorways cut into those. There is no power whatsoever in this section. It runs in here on the extension cord for the table saw. All of the power was stripped out and all new 12 gauge wiring was run into here from, the break, from a 200 amp breaker box because we didn't like the things we saw in the old wiring. The kitchen will be here. That door leaves over there, but you'll have your kitchen here with a bar. Dining room table will be over here. Over there will be a pantry. That door is going, and then the two offices will be in there, and we'll have an exit here. But that's as far as we've gotten this winter, except for the really cool thing. Oh, I forgot about it. Come on. This was, this was an added thought. We needed to have a hallway. We thought, well, we need some guest bedrooms. And then we decided, and we cut different, eventually these films will come out, but we cut different angles so Tracy was happy with what she saw because we wanted to keep some aspect of a church when you walked into the room and we thought this vaulted hallway was unique. You don't see it in many homes. And you'll come down and you'll go into a bedroom here and you'll go into a bedroom there. And then where that door goes, is the end of what we're using on the church. We promised you that we were gonna to try to do some small living and it looks a little bigger on film because I've got the camera set to a real wide angle lens so you could take in as much as possible. But that's pretty much the walkthrough of the church. The next big project we have to do is put a roof on it. And we're probably not doing that wholly ourselves. All of this we've done with just the two of us. Um, it's been a chore, but this is what we've done for 35 years. We've built things and we've learned a lot. And we worked with master tradesmen in the union halls and the trades and picked up on a lot of what we needed to know. The roof is just a massive project. Before we can build the kitchen and all that in there, there's a few small leaks because of the way that roof was put on. 
So we have to put all new trusses on half of that and come out. And I'm just going to need a little help doing that because it's going to be a little more than Tracy and I can do. And Jonathan will be involved. And Norman, if you're watching, you're coming to Greenbrier County, buddy, <laughs> eventually because we're putting a metal roof on this church and bring your family down for vacation. Tracy can take them out and show them the sights and me and you put the roof on. But that's really it. We'll try to get some more video up that shows the processes that we went through to get where we were. We haven't killed each other. We're not mad at each other. We haven't hit each other with a hammer or anything. We've actually enjoyed it. But it's kind of all on hold now, except for rainy days and cold days on weekends, that I might finish the drywall and finish the wainscot because it's garden season. And like I said earlier in the film, trying to convert an old church into a house, and at the same time, we've got to set up our homestead, is crazy. It's, it's like two huge projects all at one time. And uh, I don't know if there's another YouTube channel where they're building a house here and putting in fruit trees and gardens over here, but uh, stick with us because we're going to do it. And if you're in the neighborhood, stop by, bring a shovel. That's it for this video, though. We'll catch you on the next one.